What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your man Chaz Ellis once again. And a lot of people want to know what their ex is doing after the breakup. Directly after the breakup, what's going on? How do I get this person back? Does this person want me back? Do they want to deal with me? Do they love me? Did they ever love me? What's happening? Are they having a party? Are they drinking? What's going on? Well, I'm going to let you know. What's happening right after the breakup for about three to six months, mostly, most of the time, is the victory dance. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings by saying that. I'm not trying to rub it in your face or anything. But that's usually the period that I call the victory dance. Why is that? Because most of the time when somebody breaks up with you, it's not as spur of the moment as you might think. You might think you just got in an argument and it was over. But normally they've been thinking about this for quite some time. So when they break up with you, it's actually something that they've really been working towards and they feel a certain sense of accomplishment. A lot of times, I know we don't want to hear this because we want to be totally victim. There's things that they didn't like about you. There's things that were annoying them about you. Maybe you didn't do it on purpose. Or maybe you didn't really necessarily do anything wrong. Maybe you were too lovey-dovey or not lovey-dovey enough, whatever. But there are things about you that they didn't like. So when they finally do break up with you, a lot of times they feel really good. They feel a certain sense of accomplishment. Like, yes, all I can think of is the bad that happened in this relationship. And I'm so happy to be past that. I did it. I accomplished something. Also, like I said, people plan this a lot of times. So a lot of times they have good support systems in place. They already got somebody to watch the kids for them. Uh, they already got somebody to take care of the dog. They already got somebody to watch their shifts at work. They're going to be walking away from a lot of responsibility that went along with being in a relationship, whether you were married, living together, just, you know, in a relationship for a period of time. They're going to be walking away from a lot of that responsibility and into a new land of freedom. This is why they're going to be victory dancing. All of a sudden, now they can go out to all the clubs they might have wanted to go to. They can talk to all the people who might have said that they were cute. They can hang out with their friends who they haven't seen in a while. They can do a lot of things. Y'all might have had a lot of bills together that they walked away from. Y'all might have had a lot of different responsibilities that they walked away from. Children, family, sickness, things of that nature. Normally, you'll also notice that people usually leave you when they're kind of at an up period and you're at a down period. This means that they're walking away from somebody who's down and in a lot of cases dealing with people who maybe they've been talking to. And this is men and women. I know some women going to be like, no, only these men. And do. No, I've been doing this for a long time. I know some young men out there like, no, women only do that. Been doing it for a long time. It's both. So. What usually happens is they got somebody kind of that they're talking to, whether it's been as a friend or a side relationship or whatever, they got that out there too. And this contributes to the victory dance. They're dancing around, having a good time, enjoying life because they kind of planned this while it was hitting you spontaneously. Now, conversely, normally this is the lowest point for you during a breakup. You're in a situation where you're generally blindsided because you didn't plan for a breakup. You're in a situation where you don't have a support system set up. If you got kids, you don't have anybody to watch them. If you have a job, you don't have anybody to cover your shifts. You don't have anybody to go to the club with. You don't have any friends that you really want to hang out with right then. You don't have any other people that you've been talking to. So right then, you're kind of in a state of feeling bad, feeling hurt, feeling broken and confused. This is a time where you do not want to try to reach out to this person because let me tell you this and let you understand this. You're not going to stop the victory dance. I don't care if you slash their tires. I don't care if you burn the building that they live in down. I don't care what you do. You're not going to stop the victory dance, so there's no reason to try. All you can do is pause, then prolong it. Anything you do to these people, their friends, family members, and people that they've, that they've set up as a um, support system are going to rally around them and keep the victory dance going. That other dude that she's now talking to is going to become an even stronger ally. That other woman that she's been talking to is going to, or he's been talking to, or she's been talking to, whichever, um, is going to become a stronger ally. Whoever the situation is, whatever the situation is, that's going to become 10 times worse if you try to stop the victory dance. All you can do is kind of pull back at this point. They've got a plan. They're working their plan. 
You don't want to get involved in that right now. Even if they do reach out and contact you, it's going to be kind of a supplement when they're dealing with other people. You're just going to kind of be something to do. So they're going to slow text you a lot of times. They're going to watch you go on an emotional roller coaster. We're not going to try to psychoanalyze them. Oh, there must be a narcissist. No, this is a person who broke up with somebody, bro. It happens. All right. So that's kind of how the victory dance goes. And what you can do in that time period is nothing. Don't get involved with them at all. What you need to do at this time is use it as a period of self-reflection. Use it as a period to go ahead and grieve and hurt if you need to do that. Because the next times, the next periods in time, or the next phases are really going to be more suited to you. So take your time, grieve when you need to, and then start getting up on your feet slowly but surely. This period usually lasts about three to six months. So... It does, it's not terrible. It doesn't last a long, long time most of the time, but you just need to be prepared for it and you need to do what you got to do. All right, hopefully I was able to help you out. Once again, it's your man, Chaz Ellis. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with somebody else. Peace.